How you doing? Duff here. Um, today's video isn't anything conventional. It's not pull-ups, it's not push-ups, it's not muscle-ups, or any other strange exercise videos. It is instead baking. I'm going to be baking a chocolate cake today. I'm not baking just any chocolate cake. I am baking the best chocolate cake I ever had. This is a recipe that my mom handed down years ago. She used to make it for me. Allison used to make it for me as well. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing. As you can see, I have a lot of the ingredients laid out already. I had to buy most of them because I didn't have any because I don't bake normally. But uh, I'm going to uh, go through this and see if I can successfully make the chocolate cake. Um, first thing I'm going to be doing is preparing the dry ingredients, which look like they are flour, sugar, salt, baking powder, baking soda, cocoa, and that's it for dry ingredients. And you're supposed to sift all the ingredients before you mix them together. So I'm going to do that. One of the things that makes this cake a little bit different than a normal chocolate cake is it happens to include coffee in the list of ingredients. Um, when my mom made it, she would actually like brew conventional coffee. I'm taking a shortcut and just going to use some instant Maxwell House. Uh, you only need a cup of it, so I'm going to make that a while, and um, then I'll, I'll get back to the dry. While the water's heating up, you'll notice I have some butter sitting out. That's to use later in the process to create the icing. Yes, that is two full sticks of butter that are used. I did not say this cake was healthy, but it is very good. But anyways, that butter needs to be softened, so that's why I have it sitting out a while. So it can uh, relax a little bit. Okay, coffee is prepared. Approximately one cup of coffee, a little bit more. I think it'll be okay. Sifting is kind of boring, but all dry ingredients are supposed to be sifted. There's the first cup of flour. You need to sift the sugar. I've never seen sugar uh, sifted before. Cocoa, I guess, that would make sense to sift that. And it's only one teaspoon of salt, so I'm not going to sift salt either. Okay, that's two cups of sifted flour. Kind of looks like a fire ant mound. Okay, three quarters of a cup of cocoa. better if you have the right attachment.
chef, so that's supposed to be good. I don't get it. Shifting cocoa. Okay, two cups of sugar. Not sifting. It's a lot of sugar. Teaspoon of salt and teaspoon of baking powder. Teaspoon. This is baking powder, one teaspoon. And two teaspoons of baking soda. Never really knew the difference between baking powder and baking soda. I still don't. somewhere. Okay. Okay, at this point this should be all the dry ingredients in the actual cake itself which just to review is two cups of flour, two cups of sugar, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of baking powder, and oops, you want to see it, and two teaspoons of baking soda, and three quarters of a cup of cocoa. That's all of the dry ingredients. So next will be the wet stuff. Okay, now we're adding in some wet ingredients. Looks like you add the oil and the milk first. A cup of oil, vegetable oil, and a cup of milk. So let's do the oil first. Hopefully vegetable oil is okay. I think so.
Okay, a cup of milk. I'm just I'm using skim milk. Cause that's what I normally drink. I would imagine whole milk might be better. But I'll deal with it. Okay, there's one cup of milk. Looks kind of gross. So now mix at medium for two minutes. And I've never worked this uh, mixer before, but I think I can do it. Next, I add the eggs, two eggs, a teaspoon of vanilla, and the coffee. eggs and just the coffee. So with this cake not only will you, will you get a sugar rush but you'll also get a caffeine rush. A little bit at least. Okay mix again. Two minutes. Start with low speed, otherwise you have some splashing. Looking a little watery to me. Okay, I just checked with Allison. I was a little worried because it, the um, mix looks so liquidy, but she said that's the way it's supposed to be, so that's good. So I'm going to mix a little bit more. Of course, I should preheat the oven, right? Okay. The oven uh, gets set to 325. Back to mixing. All right, that looks it looks mixed, I think. to be pouring the mix into the cake pan thing. Oh, 
Damn it. Okay. Complication. I think this is why Allison usually didn't use the stand mixer for this. You can see at the bottom, some of the solids are, are kind of gooped up at the bottom, not mixed. So I need to mix them. So I'm going to try to pour this stuff back in. So first tip, maybe not use a stand mixer for this, use a handheld to do the mixing. Ugh. Kinda sucks though. Hopefully it doesn't mess it up. And to be honest, I wasn't even sure that I had a mixer, hand mixer, but I do. Hopefully it works. Okay, hand mixing begin. Okay, hopefully that fixed it. Okay, that's, that's better. This isn't working very well. I'm very tempted to just lick this extra cake mix, but they say raw eggs are not a good thing to consume, so I won't lick it. Okay. So there is the cake mix itself, um, short of, or except for the little mix up with the uh, blending of it. Hopefully it's okay. So now as soon as the oven hits 325, I'm going to be popping the mix into the, uh, the pan into the oven and it's supposed to bake for 25 to 30 minutes. My mom said that sometimes it takes longer than what it says in the recipe and the best way to tell if it's done is to stick a little, one of those cake tester things in the middle. If it comes out and, it's, and the stuff is sticking to it, it needs to stay in the oven a little bit longer. If it comes out clean, it should be ready to go. Um, while this is in, I'm going to um, start on the, the uh, icing, which is another interesting project. So let me clean up and regroup. Okay, making the icing requires the use of a something called a double boiler. This isn't a real double boiler, but what it is is basically two pots inside of each other. The bottom pot has water in it, top pot does not. And I guess this is a way to prevent things from burning, from what I read. So this is the way you do the first step of the icing. You add one cup of milk. One 
cup of milk and five tablespoons of flour. Um, I wonder if I should sift this. The uh, flour says it's pre-sifted, so with the icing I'm going to just go unsifted. Okay, that mixture you're supposed to whisk until thickened and then let cool. I have to see if I have a whisk. Hmm. Or something I can use as a whisk. Okay, I don't seem to have a whisk, so I'm going to just use one of my mixer beaters. This could get pretty boring, so we'll come back when I'm done. Okay, this is a little messier than I expected. Um, once the water in the bottom came to a boil, it was started to shoot out the sides. So now I have hot, messy water all over the top of the stove. Ouch. It was hot. But as you can see, this almost looks like mashed potatoes. Ouch. Um, ah, hot, hot. Burning fingers. Ow. So anyways, uh, I'm going to let this stuff cool, and um, then I will be adding the butter, sugar, and vanilla, So, and I'm going to try to clean up this mess. Okay, the recipe says to bake the cake for 25 to 30 minutes. I set the timer for 25 minutes, just pulled it out. I can tell that the middle is still... Um, still wet so I'm gonna put it back in for at least another five minutes it does look it looks like a cake though at least so that's that's encouraging but uh, it's gonna go back in the oven for a little bit more okay I don't have a real te uh, cake tester thingy so I'm just gonna try using a fork Still stuff on the fork, so oh yeah, a lot of stuff. Not done yet. Back in the oven. Okay, I've had the cake in for well over 30 minutes at this point. Um, Double check with Allison. She said one way to tell if it's good is if you shake it and the middle stays solid. That looks good. She said the fork might not come out totally clean. A cake tester is better. What the hell? <laughs> wow. Well, that's not. <laughs> That's not supposed to happen. Wow. Okay. Um, hopefully your pan will not crack after you take it out of the oven. I don't know if it did that because I had it sitting on the burner. You know, and the and the pot wasn't fully, or the pan wasn't fully supported. Oh, jeez. Okay. 
Well, hopefully I can salvage this somehow. It's not going back in the oven, obviously. But <laughs> let's check the center anyways. Had to be me. Hey look, the fork's coming out clean. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Hmm. I'm gonna kind of smell something burning. Oh shit! Okay. That is why the pot cracked. Because like an idiot, I had that front right burner on. <laughs> oh, and I sat the pot on top of it. And that's why I smell smoke. Well, you learn something new every day. Okay, so maybe I can salvage that. I don't know. I'll just let it cool on the pizza stone. And uh, maybe once it's done, I can move it to another uh, another pan or something. I don't know. So anyways, uh, that's it for now. Okay, there's my cake in its cracked cake pan because I left it on a hot burner like a moron. Uh, told Alice and I cracked her cake pan. She's not happy. Might be buying a new one for her. Uh, but now I'm moving on to the the icing. I've had my butter out and softening. Here's my goopy mixture, which was the flour and the milk that was heated in a double boiler. So to this I'm supposed to add the butter, a cup of sugar, and a teaspoon of vanilla. very important that the butter is softened because if it's not it's a real pain to get this mixed well okay begin blending Icing tastes good. That's a good thing. Um, all right, so that's good. This is actually the part I like the most is the icing. So the icing's made. Cake has to cool. You don't want to put the icing on when the cake is still warm at all because the icing will then kind of just melt and get runny and 
look like shit. So I'm in a holding pattern until the uh, cake cools, and I duct tape the the, the uh, pan together. So that's it for now. Okay, the cake's been cooling for a while. Um, you might notice I put some duct tape on the side to keep the pot or the pan intact until I'm done eating the cake. It seems to be okay. I, I think it'll it'll make do. Um, the cake is a little warm, but I think it, it'll be okay to ice it. To icing, icing, icing the cake. I don't know what you how you say that. I'm gonna get busy here. Smear it on. I mean, except for um, stupidly leaving the the cake pan on on a hot burner and um, mixing it in the uh, the KitchenAid mixer, mi mixing all the ingredients together using the KitchenAid mixer instead of a hand mixer. Those are really the only two screw ups easily corrected if you pay attention. Um, and of course the ultimate test will be what this actually tastes like when I have a piece tomorrow for my birthday. But I know the icing at least is good, so that's that's a plus. So I would say overall you can use this as a guide to make your own kick-ass chocolate cake. If uh, you do make your own cake, please feel free to report back the results. Because... Um, this is really a good cake. So there you go. Doesn't look too bad. Put a couple candles on there. And you're good to go. Best part of this is licking the beaters clean after you're done. So I hope you found this video entertaining and interesting. If not, sorry. This is probably the first and last baking video you will ever see from me. Duffman out.